Hello, today we are going to be solving for the variable of x. We're going to figure out what x is finally. Well, it's different for each one, but that's all right. We're going to be using one-step transformations, and we're just going to solve it in one step. When you get an equation like this, what that means is that you've got whatever is on the left side of the equation is equal to whatever is on the right side. So in this case, 2x is equal to 6. Or in other words, 2 times something is equal to 6. Now, most of us looking at that will go, 2 times something is 6. Well, we know 2 times 3 is 6. But how did we actually get there? And while a lot of this initial work can be done inside our heads, we want to show all of the steps so that when we get to more complicated questions, which we'll get to, we know what we're doing. So let's go ahead and take a look. What we do to get there is we would take 2x divided by 2 on the left side and 6 divided by 2 on the right side. So we're going to divide both sides of the equal sign divided by 2. The reason we do this is because it's called the inverse operation or the opposite operation. Up here we have 2 times x, so we're going to divide by x. And what that does is 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 times x will leave us with our x by itself. So what we'll end up with is x is equal to 6 divided by 2, which is 3. All right? And that's how we would solve this type of question. So we're going to use the opposite or the inverse operation in each of these questions. We'll have all sorts of different types of operations, but in each case we'll do the, the opposite. Let's take a look. x plus 2 equals 5. Again, we might say, well, 3 plus 2 is 5. But let's go ahead and, and do the math and show what we're doing. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equal sign. Again, the opposite of adding is subtracting. So when we subtract 2 from both sides of the equal sign, on this side we get 0. So we would have x plus 0 is equal to 5 minus 2, which is 3. Well, x plus 0 is simply equal to x. So x is equal to 3. And that's how we would do the math to actually get from this question down to the bottom. All right, so that's using the inverse operation. Let's do another question over here. x minus 5 equals 10. Some value taking away 5 will give us 10. Well, we're going to use the inverse operation. So instead of subtracting 5, we will add 5. We're going to add it, keep it nice and balanced, add it to both sides of this equation. Because remember, this equal sign means the stuff on this side is equal to the stuff on this side. So if we add 5 to this side, we have to add 5 to that side. And we'll end up with, well, 5, negative 5 plus 5 gives us 0. Or in other words, just x by itself, isolated variable. And x is equal to 10 plus 5, which is 15. All right? And we can check our work by substituting that in there. Is 15 minus 5 equal to 10? Yeah, it is. 15 minus 5 sure is equal to 10. All right, let's go to a different question. Okay, we've done addition, we've done subtraction. Now we're going to do some division. Division works like this. You've got x divided by 7 is equal to 20. And to, to deal with that is a little bit more complicated. We have to understand that if we multiply this side times 7, and we do the same on this side, that's the opposite of divided by. x divided by 7, the opposite of division is multiplication. And then just like we did at the very beginning, showed the most number of questions with division because it gives us the most trouble. They cancel out. 7 times the fraction over 7, the denominator of 7, will cancel each other out and they become 1. And 1 times x just leaves you with x. So what we end up with is x here on the left side, and 7 times 20 gives us 140 for our answer. And we can check our work again. Is 140 divided by 7 equal to 20? Yes, it is. All right. So we can solve using or for division as well. 
Again, fractions are the most complicated, so let's go ahead and do another one. We're going to solve it exactly the same way. We're going to multiply times 4. Both sides multiply times 4. I'm going to cancel out here. My 4 on the top and 4 on the bottom, they cancel out and become 1. 1 times x is equal to x. So x is left by itself, and 5 times 4 is 20. Again, we can check our work. 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5, so we're in good shape. So let's look at 4 all on the same page. Um, we haven't done one of multiplication yet, but we'll get to that. It's going to be very similar, you'll notice. So what we do, opposite operation every single time. For addition, we use subtraction. Subtract from both sides of the equal sign, A is equal to 6. That's it. For um, subtraction, we would add. So if it's B minus 2, we would add. Do the opposite. B is equal to negative 8 plus 2 will give us negative 6. All right. Multiplication, 5 or negative 5 times x. What we're going to do is divide both sides by negative 5. The negative 5's here will cancel each other out, leaving us with x. And x is equal to negative 25 divided by negative 5 gives us a positive 5. If you think about it, negative 5 times positive 5 would give us negative 25. And then our final question, n divided by negative 4, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation times negative 4, cancel each other out, n is equal to negative 32. So that's how we would solve those questions. Just remember to get a variable by itself. You do one thing. You do the opposite operation. That's it for today.